Yehovah Malak Olam Olamot Yehovah Malak Yame Rakis Yehovah Gadol Makari and Tios Yehovah Erdanai Yehovah Elohim Kurios Tios Penta Greta Kurios Tios Pistos Elda at Yehovah Yel Yamuna Yehovah he was Leon Curios, Otios, O Pentacrita. Baslios, Baslion, Kai Curios, Curion. Yehovah Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal. Yehovah Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christon Isun Ton Curion. Kurion ni mahagiyan panta kreta, gadol gadol, gebura. Yehova ishmal kam, Yehova shamma. Yel nakum Yehova, yel nakum yapa. Natsak Israel, la sheker, gava gava. Triambos Yehova, Isus Christos, panta kreta, gadol gadol, gebura. Yehova Ishmal Kam, Yehova Shamma, Yelna Kum Yehova, Yelna Kum Yapa, Natsak Israel La Sheker, Gava Gava, Triembas Yehova, Isus Christos, Pantakreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura, Mora Rosh Nasa, Elohim Elohim, Ille ilai shalut, Yehova Malak. Yehova Malak, Olam Olam Ad. Yehova Elahenu, Yehova Ekad. Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Zoan Logan, Ogar Tautios. Dulas, Desmios, Despotes, Dikayesune, Enisus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa Pantacreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Derek Emuna Bakar, Mishfat, Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh Elelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto the Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and ignorant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkenu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling entering ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing Romans 8, 14 and verse number 16. Particularly in verse 14, emphasizing the point that they that have been led by the Spirit of the Lord of a God, they have been called to be the adult sons, huios in the Greek, mature sons, sons of responsibility. And when he come to verse number 16, he said, Spirit, that is Holy Spirit of Lord God, beareth witness with our human spirit that we are the children of God. And the word there, children, it is called 
technon and the translators would have put there instead of children as disciples. So Lord God the Holy Spirit beareth witness with your spirit if you are a disciple to the word of the Lord my God. If you are not a disciple then forget because the Greek word technon has a lot of significance over there. As many people today, they have lost the importance to realize Christ our Lord our God began his ministry with the disciples. He continued and handed over that ministry to the disciples. And he says to go and make disciples of all the nations. As out of twelve, Judas Iscariot was a traitor. And in John 6, referring back to him, he said, He is Satan. So the church age today, instead of becoming the true disciples by not grieving and scratching and vexing or lying to Lord God the Holy Spirit, they are following the exact pattern of Zudas is Iscariot. And the reason is very simple. As Matthew chapter 22 in verse 8 through 12 we have been reading. When he claims to his friend. Why have you made up your point over here without these garments? And then he said. He is silent. He did not go to reply the reason. And the word he calls over here, friend, Hatiros. The same thing which he said to Zudas Iscariot, friend, what you want to do, do it, go and do it as soon as possible. So the same word Hatiros is used over there. And then he says, the man was speechless, Fimao. He became speechless. He doesn't have any reason to tell because he did not walk according to the demands of Bible doctrine. So today if you would look upon that great chapter, John number 6, when Christ our Lord our God makes Apostle John to write these things from the viewpoint of AD 96, here he said, Jesus answered them in verse 70, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? The word devil over here it is called as diabolos, the one who opposes God's plan, the one who doesn't go to fulfill that which has been said to be the will of God the Father. Such a one is called Diabolos. And today, if Lord God, the Holy Spirit, should bear witness with your human spirit that you are the children of God, then, without fail, you ought to be disciples. If you are not a disciple to the word of Lord God, then for sure, dear brethren, you're going to let go many valuable things in the heaven because if you're not a disciple, you're not even called to be a Christian. A disciple follows the instructions of the Lord, Luke 9, 23. The disciple is the one who has been trained for more than one year to be called as a Christian. And today how contrary we are walking to the will of Lord God the Father clearly proves to us that we cannot be called as disciples unto my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through a rebound. And let's come back and continue what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us. On today's date, 1820 past, to the praise of his glory in his matchless, marvelous, infinite divine.
glorious grace we shall continue after this prayer sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pearl of wonders of lord god's word infinitely divine holy father once again coming into the grace of lord to learn the word what else do we desire on this earth o lord whom at least we have on this earth o lord to be desired of god from thee if it is not you o lord for us then what we have on this earth if it is not you in the heaven for us o lord then what we have on this earth to guide us according to thy counsel and receive us unto you o lord with the indwelling and ring ministry of lord god the holy spirit bearing witness with our human spirit that we are the disciples and if lord god the holy spirit should bear witness with us then we ought to be taking our cross every day the prescribed portion for that particular day on every day daily basis and we need to come and learn your mind and at the lord many people have not been in this path though the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of those adult sons with eager desire get the church age believers in spite of given to them this great privileges of all time they haven't come to grow up to the knowledge of your desired will help us our father to reach them so that we could teach each and every one on this human ways that Christ alone is the only right way for our life the only right thinking in our terms and to live the right mind for thee so father having to learn about the things which are prepared for us on today's state in the past as we study them we pray the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit to enlighten to challenge and to bless us by this message in christ name we ask so great lord amen in leviticus chapter 1 in verse number 5 it stands written he shall kill the bullock before the lord and the priest aaron's son shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation here we find the word called to be blood and this word blood is called dhama and if we would go back to look upon this word blood it is exactly the same pictographical representation for the word called adama so there is not a difference that is you have to make sure to get every thought in the facet of the cell of your body that is the blood which pumps in you every thing that goes on to be in your blood you have to get it into the viewpoint of christ that's why blood he said do not eat and there you can find the great chapter to confession of our sins in first samuel chapter 14 that jonathan wins over the war with the philistine and he says today is a great joy of a day for us and those people they go to eat along with the blood so there he says we shall kill off but people resisted to not to kill jonathan because he bought such great victory but eating with the blood was the sin so in order not to perform such mistakes in numbers chapter 15 verses 38 through 41 he goes to give particularly to talk about 
the standards called fringes of blue so that whenever you look upon the borders of your dress which has been made up of fringes of blue you shall remember that you shall not break the covenant of the Lord so here in simple terms when Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden he paid back or recompensed back his life by the blood of an animal and now you have the same blood for us the blood of Lord Jesus Christ cleansing us from all sins so what is the meaning of that blood so man's blood is what the life is if there is no blood you know very well you're going to die so blood has to be fresh blood has to be really in vigor and valor all these things scientifically they're trying to prove but blood for us in simple terms meant to say make sure you're going to get every thought every thought because that's the pure reason called to be Adama and as we were looking yesterday in Ezekiel chapter 12 in verse 19 Adonai Yehovah that is making every thought into the captivity for Christ such is the true vigor and valor for your life and such true vigor and valor of your life when you get every thought into captivity for Christ that's the great expression of joy to God the Father so that's what the word is all about your whole world make your every thought to be in the vigor and valor of the word of the Lord so that you can get such great expression of joy expression of joy double expression of joy when you're walking having your consciousness to be known is this the word says in simple terms is this the word of God exactly says for us go and cross check in the original Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic if the word of Lord God says daily you have to take up your cross and follow my Christ and if you're not doing that then you don't have the blood though you may think blood is needed for you to go and have your examination during your sickness if you have your blood make sure to get in your blood every thought what the Bible says because greater you walk contrary to what the Bible says greater you're going to end up in the standards of vanity therefore Christ our Lord our God said whosoever believeth upon him shall never perish but have an everlasting life being risen with Christ seek those things that are above having a new name as the work of you on this earth in the terms of that new name the reality of your true life And that new name which has been given for us demands as new wine has to be poured in the new bottles. So the new name, the new quality demands now something of this new physical structure. And in that you know the physical body contains the blood so the blood has to get transformed the old things are passed away they have come to become new what is that new name the new structure of your life and what is that new structure for your life make sure you get every thought into captivity for Christ the new name, the new structure, the new activities of life.
and yet we are still walking in the oldness of the spirit, oldness of the law, not in the newness of the spirit. The oldness of the law, rituals, without knowing the realities. The newness of the spirit demands day by day to renovate your thinking, making up your body to be once again revigorated. The newness you have, something of a great high and unique quality. But man is still the same of the old structure. So dear brethren, he said, the blood. But this blood has to be changed. This blood has to be brought, brought into captivity for Christ. So he says over here in, in 2 Samuel chapter 22, in verse number 26, The people who shall show mercy call to be cursed, that is, graciously they build the wall of fortification under any pressure of this life, to make sure they get every thought into captivity for Christ. To the merciful, he said, God the Father will show up merciful as you show that he will reap. If you are sowing up to the knowledge of Bible doctrine, God the Father will give you abundance of peace, prosperity, inaccessibly high. There is nothing that you can lose when you sow to the word of Lord God. And at the same time, to the man who is upright, who is making his blood to be the authority of the word of the Lord, so this is called to be upright, as the Hebrew says, tamiyamim, the one who is complete. You know what is the word upright in the pictographical representation meant to say? The one who is wholesome, innocent, or the one who is complete in accord with the truth and fact. How you can be complete in accord with the truth and the fact? When you are mature, when you are upright, and if you are mature, he says, you are being witnessed to be led by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If you haven't been witnessed or led, by the Spirit of the Lord, that meant to say you are not yet mature, because you have first not passed the gate of Kesed. In that Kesed you will find the wall of fortification under any pressure, you get every thought into captivity for Christ. That's the meaning of Kesed. You build up a wall of fortification in such a manner under any pressure of this life, you're going to make sure you're going to get every thought into captivity for Christ. So, for the blood, we have two pictographical representations. The first one, getting every thought into captivity for Christ. The symbol of a door. And then for the second one, for the blood, is the flowing stream of water. The same thing for Adama. Aretes is different. We have been reading that. Aretes meant to say what? Pressure upon your blood. Adama is to get every thought which flows in your blood to get back into the captivity for Christ. Adama is again representative of the blood which has been told for us. Make sure that you're going to become new creature called to be kinekatesis. 
and you are indeed kinekatesis in Christ the moment when you believe upon him by faith alone in Christ alone. You are no longer into the standards of the oldness of the flesh or the letter, but we are in the newness of the spirit. So here, dear brethren, the things what we are going to read, they really teach to us the essence of life which has not been practiced today in our pulpits, which has not been executed in our pulpits. So the first thing, Kesad, he shows himself Kesad. And the second thing he calls a pride, Tamiyamim. For the Kesad you have, the first symbol of the blood or Adama called to be the door. When you come to the Tamiyamim, you find the second, alpha, second pictographical representation which has been used for Adama or blood called to be the stream of flowing of the blood or water. The symbol of flowing of blood or water. So Tamiyamim, he said, the blood which flows in you, it has to be under the authority, the sign or authority. So what is that sign or authority? It says, the authority wherewith you pass now to become the adult sons, mature sons. You're no longer babes to be tossed to and for Ephesians chapter 4 emphasizes. But rather, the bona fide work of the pastor teacher given, given to them to see that they are able to reach that maturity in the Lord, having the same thinking of Christ. For that reason, they have been sealed until the day of redemption to the praise of Lord God's glory by Lord God the Holy Spirit. So, dear brethren, over here in Ephesians chapter 4, he said, The sign of authority or the maturity. He says in verse number 13, Why you have been given the work of pastor teachers? He said first in verse 12, The perfecting of the saints, catarismos, to reach the destiny which has been to fulfill the marvelous wonders of Lord God's glory, for the work of the ministry, business of Lord God's ministry. And what is that ministry? Yesterday we were reading from the word of Acts 26 verses 14 or 16 through 18. For this cause God the Father has appeared unto Paul. For what reason? You will be my minister and you will be my witness. The same thing for every believer in Christ. The same thing over here. He says, For the work of the ministry, which has been called to proclaim the great news of God the Father by living the holy manner walk of life, by witnessing the truth. And then he goes on to say, edifying of the body, oikodomio, to build up, the thing that goes on to promote, till when, till when you will be perfecting the saints, till when you will be doing the work of ministry, till when you will edify the body of Christ, he says, till we all come to the unity of faith, that is, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and no denominations. Till we all come to the unity of the Bible doctrine. And what is that unity? The unity is to become as henotes, agreement. But today you look day by day, the churches are dividing in the standards of their own denominational thinking. Not having the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That's why we can easily tell. This cannot be bared witness. Lord God, the Holy Spirit would say, though you say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this? In Luke chapter 13, Matthew chapter 7. God the Father would say, Workers of iniquity, depart from me. I never knew you who you are. Because you are not able to come to that agreement. Henotes to one. One in doctrine. 
If the church would wake up their eyes, they would come back to know what is that one in doctrine, what is that one in doctrine to grow up into grammar as joined as disciples. Matthew 13, 52. That is the only way. That is the only thing which has been demanded by God the Father in heaven. And we are lacking it today in our pulpits. And what a sad thing it is for us. Till we all could come to the unity, henotes, agreement in doctrine. So what does the doctrine say? Joining as disciples, growing up into grammatias and going and making disciples of all the nations. When we do reach to that agreement, it is the work of every pastor teacher, it is the work of every believer in Christ, the duty of ambassadorship in encouraging one another as it has been called today through the word of Lord God. It is his bona fide duty as we call today. Not just seven times, but he said 77 times, though the seven times you're going to fall, he said he's able to build back again because that is the marvelous glory of God the Father. Build back. When God the Father has given you 17 to 7 times the excuse, don't grieve the Lord God the Holy Spirit again. Don't squelch Lord God the Holy Spirit again. But rather be controlled of it and reach that unity, agreement in doctrine till you all could come to the unity of doctrine. Till you all could come to the unity of doctrine. And yet, we are not able to realize why you are having so many denominations, why you are having so many cults, heretics, heresies. Because they don't even come to realize Romans 8, 16 in the Greek which says, Lord God, the Holy Spirit can bear witness with our human spirit only if we are technon, disciples. And today where is the discipleship program in our churches? Make it for sure, dear brethren, you have to be a disciple because John 1, 11 and 12 emphasizes those who received Christ, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. The people of the Israelites rejected him, but we now, the Gentiles, called to be the wild olive plant, being engrafted into the original olive plant. And we cannot simply live our life for silly, stupid details. You all need to come for the work of Lord God. You all need to realize the will of Lord God. Because if you are not a disciple, forget, Lord God, the Holy Spirit cannot bear witness. Forget that you are a Christian because John 1, 11 and 12 emphasizes, He gave the power to them, exudes authority to them who are in the standards of discipleship program. To them He gave that power. Again the word technology. And if Lord God, the Holy Spirit, should bear with your human spirit that you belong to Christ, if He wants to witness you that you are belonging to Christ, then you should be a disciple, not weekly ones coming to the church, not monthly ones attending the church for your communion tables or giving back to God the things pertaining to your tithes, there's no way in the New Testament you compare the tithes, but we know not how the people, though they are well known, because foolish people will be recognized by the fools as a blind leads another blind. So they think they're well recognized, the great speakers, who love to go to talk about the personal way of life, and they love to emphasize the flock for giving more money, tight, tight, tight. 
the new testament doesn't talk about the tithe as you prosper as lord god the father would give you in your heart so you can give because it is not the money for giving for the luxury life of the pastor but to enhance the vision of missionaries to go and proclaim the good news to go and make the word of lord god to be well stabilized because missionary will know to learn the language of those countries and he has been trained over here in the original hebrew greek and aramaic so that he can go and in return inculcate inculcate the knowledge of bible doctrine again and again he can go and inculcate so when he goes to that country he may not have financial support so the funds being organized the money being collected should be supported to such men who are faithful who have been really working on to spread the gospel who are really working on to give the great work of lord god the father number one priority for such ones you have to get back you have to pay that's the reason you collect the offerings because the minister who is been asking for a fixed money is not at all the minister though you may have many needs in this life you have enough of clothing food and shelter the remaining money what you need to do get it to the word of the lord spread the word of the lord But today such ministers are emphasizing money 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 if those ministers would have been emphasizing rather than money discipleship program at least some change would have occurred at least they would realize that they are in the saving category of Christ at least they would realize they are not like that 12th man Judas Iscariot who went along to deceive the lord trait the lord and if you are not a disciple for sure dear brethren you are exact copy of judas is courier unto the lord and the pastor teachers are not preaching discipleship program these are the agents of satan with the great pain of the heart great cry of our inner man because numbers 1421 emphasizes the earth shall be filled with the marvelous wonders of his glory you know the work is not done how would you think christ of lord of god would go back to peace in the heaven and say that he has done his work therefore we find in colossians 1 verse 24 and 25 apostle paul emphasizing the point we cannot go through pay the vicarious sufferings of my christ on the cross but that mental agony of my christ what is that mental agony that you are not mature mental agony that you are not disciple mental agony that you need to grow up to the standards of bible doctrine that you all come to the agreement of doctrine we carry sufferings we cannot pay it on the cross that only Christ our lord of a god is eligible but we have been given the work of a pastor teacher in going and doing the will of god the father to pay the mental agony mental agony mental agony of my christ you know what is that mental agony worried about you in spite of given such great assets he is worried about you whether you are capable of reaching it you are capable of attaining it or you are capable of proving your love just be mindful that he is been suffering through that mental agony and we the ministers have been called at least a little part to be paid by the church that is through us right now by the church the manifold wisdom of the lord through the church at least to teach them what is this 
66 books till they all could come to that unity you know why you have to reach to that unity if not you are not called to be the upright man so he says over here in Ephesians 4 unity of doctrine and of the knowledge what is the knowledge again it is epinosis knowledge it is the full knowledge epinosis knowledge precise and correct knowledge the things pertaining to the divine standards knowledge of the son who is the son over here who yours adult son not technon the adult son of Christ unto a perfect man again the word tell yours the one which has brought to its end wanting nothing necessary for completeness it has been called to have proper integrity and virtue which goes on to say that he is a man of great mental moral character which goes to do all the time the will of god the father as number one priority that's the maturity he calls over here till you all could come to the telelios Telelios, perfect, again the word, an air, man, unto the metron, as you call to be the measure. So, unto the measure of the stator, called to be the age or the thinking of the pleroma status quo of Christ. You know, you have so much of work. Why you have been given the bona fide work of the pastor teacher just to sit and enjoy? No. Till all could come to the agreement of one doctrine. Agreement of one doctrine is to go and make disciples of all the nations. Such an agreement of one doctrine. Till we all could come to such agreement of one doctrine. Until we all could attain the epinosis knowledge of God, so that you could be called now as a Telelios man, the man who has reached that virtue or integrity, as we have been reading from Second Samuel 22 verse 26, to the upright man, that is, who has in his blood the authority of the word of Lord God, to the upright man. So here, dear brethren, till we all could come to that uprightness. So here, dear brethren, when we come back to Second Samuel chapter 22, in verse 26, he said, To the upright, he makes himself upright. That is, he reflects back to you the knowledge of Bible doctrine to be the only symbol and the authority in your life. And if you're not upright, you cannot be proven upright. In simple terms, what you sow, that you will reap. If you love in your life more than anything else, the word of Lord God, God the Father will protect you through that word itself. Those who honor me, I will honor them back. That's the principle over here, dear brother. So he says, he goes on to make up to understand till we all could come to that mature standard perfect standard unto the mitron or the measure of the age or the structure of the fullness what christ was what pleroma was therefore we have this pleroma of paltima privileges being involved the lord god the holy spirit given to us the completed can of scripture given to you the bona fide work of the pastor teachers so that you all could reach that perfectness. And furthermore, he says, that which is to the fullness of Christ, or to the standards of Christ. Why? That we be no more children. The word napias. You know what is the word children over here? It is called to be minor. The people who are untaught, unskilled. And that meant to say simple-minded person or immature Christians. The Christians who haven't known 
the real purpose of Bible doctrine in your life. You are called to be the adult sons. And in order to grow up to be the adult sons, you are called to be the disciples to be witnessed by Lord God the Holy Spirit. And from that witness of Lord God the Holy Spirit, you have been called over here in simple terms not to be as napiers, untaught, unskilled. Because you have the purpose, if you could say, I have been not known Hebrew or Greek or I don't know the interlinear, I don't know this, I don't know that, then you are not fit for it. Because you find over here in Ephesians 1, in verse number 13, In whom you also trusted, after that you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that you have believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. The same thing what we can look over there back for us to understand in 1 John 2, 20 and 27. So here if you would look in 1 John 2, 20 and 27, it would say, But you have an unction from the Holy One. That unction is called as charisma, that which has been smeared upon as an ointment so that usually prepared by the Hebrews from the oil and aromatic herbs used for anointing or integral ceremony of the priests. So this chrisma taken from the word Cairo meant to say to anoint, consecrating Jesus to the Messianic office to furnish him with the necessary powers for its administration. The same thing now, enduing Christians with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So here you find unction given to you, furnishing you with the necessary powers, furnishing you with the necessary administration which you need to take it up. So he says, dear brethren, enduring Christians, to that word called to be unction from the Holy One of God so that you don't need anyone to teach you. Why? Because he said in John 16, 13, Howbeit when the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you the things to come. So having such great thing again in First Corinthians 2.15, he said, He that is spiritual judgeth all things, that he himself is judged of no man. Because we have been now given the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, he says now in verse 27 of this 1 John, But the anointing, again the word chrisma, unction, which you have received of him, abideth in you. That is, he meno, he remaineth in you. And you need not that any man teach you. Again the word didasco. So that, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. Therefore, dear brethren, you are inexcusable if you are still babies. Because of Ephesians 1.13, he said, You were been sealed. Again, the words, Fragizo. You have been sealed until the day of redemption by what? By Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So you are inexcusable. You may think you have many reasons to give to God the Father that the reasons why you haven't gone to grow up to conform to the image of Christ. As the man was speechless in, in Matthew chapter 22, in that great wedding feast of the Lord, he was speechless. Oh. 
because he has not made up his mind or his life to be clothed with the wedding garments. He was naked. So he can look, he was speechless. So you may think, I can give alibis, I can give reasons, I can give excuses. You know why? You have been depending upon your call to be as the one who eats in his dream and drinks in his dream. You are in the dilemma. Because he think it, the dilemma or delusion, the strong delusion, the word should be delusion, is in the delusion. Because he think that he can go to rise alibis and excuses and tell to God such and such reason I was not aware, such and such reason I am not known. But Lord God the Father says, it is not that reason or this reason. If you would have really loved me, you would have just come to me and you would have asked, Lord, I want to have right into fellowship with thee all the days of this life. That would have been your only prayer. Nothing else than that would be a prayer. Your only prayer would have been that, Lord, I want to have with thee all the days of this life, right into fellowship. That would have been the only prayer. But today, apart from that, all are praying for many things in this life. So you'll be speechless. You cannot go to claim yourself alibis or reasons or excuses. To say, Lord, this, to say, Lord, that. No, dear brother. You are highly inexcusable, whether you believe it or not. You are highly inexcusable. First of all, Lord God, the Holy Spirit cannot bear witness with your human spirit. Why? Because, first of all, you are not a disciple. There itself you fail, take not. And when you don't meet that standard of discipleship, then your Christian way of life weekly wants to the church. What all rituals which you have followed without knowing the essence of reality? What all customs and traditions you might have gone through in your various denominational skills? All those things will never qualify you to be in the heaven. Because spirit cannot recognize you. They have been sealed until the day of redemption by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to the praise of His glory. It is referring back to those people who abide in that ministry. The ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, guiding them. The ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, leading them. It's going to be with them. Not all the stupid men. It's going to abide with them. Not the people who think gibberishly jumping along and dancing along and talking along in tongues. Not the people who go to be the prophetical nuts. Not the people who go to emphasize in the name of Christ we can do these miracles or healings. God the Father doesn't want anyone to suffer because you are no longer under the influence of the old sin nature after believing in Christ. Satan cannot even touch you. It hinders you not to take the truth. But it has no authority to not even to touch you because you have been now indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Your body is now called to be the temple of the living Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And since this body is the temple of the living Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you don't have even the time to think upon upon your ex-boyfriend, which is the activity of your old sin nature. You are now in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And since you are now in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you don't have time even to worry about the silly stupid details. What you will eat, what you will drink, where will your next meal be?
Because God the Father knoweth how to provide it for them. When he could send his great food through the ravenous nature crow, do not think he can provide you this food. The problem with us is we are not able to walk in his terms. And are able to think we can do this, we can do that, we can provide this, we can provide that. But no, dear brethren, we don't have anything great to exceed in this life. Apart from the knowledge of Bible doctrine, if ever you boast, he said, boast that you know the Lord. The great passage of Jeremiah 9. If anyone he boasted, let him boast that he knoweth the Lord. And yet, today people are not boasting. But he is glorifying in his riches, he is glorifying in his power, he is glorifying in his military equipment. But he is not boasting according to the terms of Bible doctrine. Because they don't want to follow the human excreta ministry of Ezekiel, rather than that, they want to love to follow cow dung ministry. Lord, I am suffering in this. Please heal me. Help me. Lord, you have called to be for Galiel ministry that I have to erect a structure of discipleship program. Help me to strengthen in that. They never want to pray for that. How would you be witnessed by Lord God, the Holy Spirit? So, to the mature, he shows himself he is mature. The people who are having that mark of authority upon the blood, to them he claims that he is mature. But for the forward nature, perverse nature, he corrects them. He says over here in Second Samuel chapter 22, in verse number 27, With the pure you shall show pure, that is the people who have renovated their head as per the demands of the word of the Lord. And with the forward, crooked, perverse, distorted thinking, the Hebrew word called to be ikesh. And what is the meaning of ikesh? The one who distort or twist. So what they're going to distort from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, their thought process is distorted. So he says, distorted. So to the distorted he says, I will show that unsavory, that is, I will make their life to be wrestled. How? He wants them now to open up their mouth, Lord, if we are having the discipleship program, then only we will be witnessed that we are the children of God. He puts in your mind that wrestling work, unsavory, no salt. The salt life is discipleship life. The true light life in the midst of this powers and crooked nation generations is discipleship life. But these people, they are not having today such a discipleship life unto the Lord. And the reasons are very, very simple and clear. Because they are still crooked, ikesh. From the rising of the sun till the going of the sun, the mind is so much distorted that the thought process is not renovated at all. And since the thought process is not renovated, God the Father will come back and say again to them, 
if you open up your mouth you will be collecting back or you can recollect back the true life only when you claim Lord it's the authority of discipleship program then only we could be saved if it is not the discipleship program we cannot be saved therefore till all could come to the unity not tossing to and fro for every wind of doctrine that cometh. You cannot be like babies, nepios, immature babies, who do not know the value of Christ. You cannot be nepios any longer, so what you shall be, he says. You shall be the divine children, adult sons, when he grow up to be adult sons in Romans chapter 8, and Lord God the Holy Spirit, bearing witness with your human spirit, he says the further work of you. In verse 17, if you are children, again technon, then only you are heirs, kleronemos, meant to say, the one who are been receiving the portion, allocated portion. Heads of God, then you are joint heads with Christ. Sug kleronemos. And then, if you, if so be that we suffer with him, we may also be glorified together. And then he says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy. What are the sufferings? The sufferings, what this day by day activity, the people they are going through, misfortune, the calamity, or on behalf of Christ, one who would go to such afflictions like Apostle Paul in Colossians 1.24 and the believers who should be ready libation to be poured down to the Lord. What is that suffering laying down your life for your friends? To save as many as you can from that lake of fire. So dear brethren, he says that we may suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. And then he says this logi zomai, accounting term, and I account that the sufferings of the present time that while we are going down on this earth are not even axios, they cannot be even compared worthy to the glory or that great judgment which you shall be apocalypti in us because the earnest expectation of the creature that is the great cry anxious and persistent expectation of the creature which is called to be the nation or the nature creation called to be the nature he says waiteth that is patiently they wait for the apocalypse manifestation of the adult sons of God. So beginning in verse 14, Spirit-led people, children, they are adult sons of the Lord God, but you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba Father. Therefore, whenever you pray, comparing yourselves to Abba Father or calling to Abba Father, you are the one who have to go to fulfill verse 19, that the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of those adult sons. And that's what your real life is. And yet, dear brother, many people are not able to come to learn the right word of the Lord. To the perverse he shows that he is unsavory. Your distorted thinking to be far away from discipleship program. No value at all. No essence at all. Wherewith you can say that I have been able to do this or I have been able to achieve this. But he says, no, you cannot. Because you are as good as unsavory to the Lord. And yet, Christ has loved us so much that he prayed to God the Father to give us his spirit. He begs before God the Father to give us this spirit. 
the spirit whereby we can cry out Abba Father the spirit whereby given to us this charisma enduing us with that ability or the facilities charisma and what is that ability or the facility given to us to furnish the Lord's work and being given the bona fide gift to do the will of the Lord but that we have still not been recognizing the importance of the Hebrew Greek and Aramaic and get back and dig and take every word every iota every carrera in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit in achieving the pale wonders of his glory and why is it you have only the love with your lips your hearts are very far away from the Lord because your traditions and precepts have been taught as per the demands of man not as per the demands of Bible doctrine so dear brethren think over these issues life is too short for us to spend our time in vanity by thinking we could be witnessed by Lord God the Holy Spirit that we shall be the children of the Most High God by not becoming his disciples by default you are born as a disciple he said in John 1 11 and 12 to them he gave the power to become the sons of God to whom those who receive him the word technon so you don't even have a chance to say Lord I was not aware about this because you are by default a disciple prove your discipleship by carrying your cross every day by becoming the will of Lord God the Father every day every day prove your discipleship program and yet God the Father emphasizes for us to the pure he shall show pure to the merciful he shall show merciful to the upright he shall show upright and to the perverse crooked people he shall show that he is unsavory because you're not able to renovate the standards of your thinking as per the demands of the word of the Lord my God so dear brethren think over these issues life is too short and that the responsibility laid on upon our shoulders is too large and which way you want to go you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of his glory in his matchless marvelous infinite divine glorious grace so with our head and eyes closed the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ without hope and without eternal life inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of his soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Where with you shall learn to apply to possess to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry Satan Laga. Have all the word in season and out of season because of Dharma from my witnesses where we have been called. The number one Dharma from my witnesses in the infinity for the Bible in our hands. The number two Dharma from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, may not worry besides nature, the entire the witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to be dear brother and other side? As we shall come back and continue to as Lord God the Holy Ghost with us to the praise of his glory in his matchless marvelous in glorious grace. We shall come back and continue tomorrow.
Today also there might be a lot of disturbances with the wind since it is summer season and the wind blows. Try to listen to the word of Lord God because it is the word of the Lord God that actually saves us. And the love we show to the word of Lord God actually rewards us. We shall come back and continue. Infinitely, my Holy Father, what a marvelous privilege it is, O Lord, to redeem the time in knowing the truth. As you have made man and the blood, and the two pictographical representation used for man, Adama and the blood, we need to learn first to show ourselves kesat, merciful, so that you are merciful towards us. And we need to show ourselves as the standards of upright, so that you can show upright for us. The first pictographical representation of that word, the door, could be for us kesat. The second one, that kesat which you have bestowed upon us, should make us to be upright in your presence, having to be mature enough not to be napiers to toss to and fro for every slight of doctrine that has been taught on this earth. So, Father, having been given this great privilege to redeem the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we pray that each and every believer should wake up to the point, the point of witnessing the word of the Lord, the point of realizing the will of the Lord, and the point of understanding the marvelous wonders of you. To the extent, Father, as we have been noticing these things, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to be glorified through our lives, so that in each and everything it is to honor your word about thy name is the right privilege for us in this life. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, May Lord God, the Holy Ghost, enlighten, and challenge, and bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.